Hi, I'm Ian Morell. Hello, I'm Adam Sir. Hi, I'm Nico Jerome. We are Team 16 Hila Engineering Solutions, and this is our Battle Frog Rube Goldberg Design Phase 3 report. The team has created the Design Phase 3 report of the Battle Frog Rube Goldberg kit with multiple recent items to reference, along with the inclusion of elements mentioned in previous reports as the project has reached its conclusion. First, the team includes the planning section, which includes previous topics. Afterwards, the team goes into concept development with a new analysis of product architecture through clustering the design and by displaying the importance of needs in industrial design. Next, the team jumps into the design section that includes CAD model and analysis of system level and detailed designs. Furthermore, the testing and refinement section elaborates on how the team could improve on our design product. The team discusses the economy of the VRG by rehashing previous material and providing a description of the time to assemble the product along with a cost sheet estimating total manufacturing costs to produce the product. Lastly, the team concludes DP3 with a statement regarding the finalization of the design. At the beginning of the semester, we gave a mission statement for what we'll be working on. The product has been a Battlefront group Goldberg machine. It will be an educational tool for fifth graders and will cover mathematics and physics. The primary market will be fifth grade teachers and administrative staff. Our final prototype was completed on December 6, 2017. Here is our updated Gantt chart for the semester. As you can see, we have essentially reached the end of the project with only the final report remaining. Our design structure matrix has not changed as all tasks have remained under sequential recovery. To get an understanding of what potential customers or users would want, customer profiles remain. Two profiles, one following fifth grade teacher John Smith and another following fifth grade student Allie Ants, the profiles covered each of their living situation, spending habits, and other personal matters. This information helped us develop customer ideals and needs. The use case covers how the BRG would be operated. The after and use case is a fifth grade teacher demonstrating the BRG for students. The basic flow has the ball entering the machine and flowing through the meter. Alternate flows include the ball falling or something breaking. The end condition has the ball exiting at the required speed. Using the customer profiles and use case, we are able to derive several customer needs. These needs that the BRG must be educational, be easy to use, be completed in a short time, be encouraging of engagement, and be safe to operate. We use the Quality Function Matrix, or QFM, to turn customer needs into target specifications. Target specifications include size, cost, content, timing, and inclusiveness. The QFM rates these for importance and priority. The Competitive Benchmarking Table allows us to compare our product to other toys on the market. This includes product cost, dimensions, assembly, and other aspects of weight mobility. As shown here, we beat our competitors in most aspects of design. To gain ideas for our project, inspiration was taken from the previous designs shown here. These five inventions have been documented and recorded and all have been inspired. This means VTEP will face no financial burden from using them. Desperate Tower was chosen as the best option to de demonstrate fifth grade physics concepts with potential and kinetic energy, but has been changed to a pin reaction that has one ball come in and hit one end of the wire and knock the other ball down the ramp at the top. It is much easier to design for assembly and use. Station 2 went through a similar process to optimize the station's adjustment of the concept of gravity. The hill was chosen as the team's final solution, but has gone through changes that improved the functionality of the BRG. The seventh hill has been turned into a dip that allows the ball to get to this station easier while still teaching the same concepts. Station 3 demonstrates the concept of working power. The cup pulley was selected as the final solution for Station 3 for its stability and durability. This is the only station out of the three to stay the same in its functionality. There are many different ways that each station can fail, and our group must determine how to fix those failures. Station 1 has been turned into a pin reaction to where one ball hits one of the pin, which makes the other ball, other end hit the second ball at the top. This can fail by the, the pin not swinging in the intended path and missing the second ball. We fix this by making guide rail for the pin. Station 2 has been turned into a dip instead of a hill, but the station can still fail in the same way. If the dip is too large, the ball can't reach the end of the station and the ball would get stuck. Our team fixed this issue by observing the ball's motion through the dip and changing the size until it does what we want it to do. Station 3 has stayed the same 
and if you fail by not catching the ball, you trap at the beginning of the station. We fix this issue by creating a larger cup for the entry of the ball and larger walls so that the ball can't bounce out of the cup. There are four chunks of our BRG. There's the half pipe that brings the ball into the station, which is station one, which is the first chunk. The second chunk is station one and the turn that connects to station one and two. They work together by creating and then conserving the energy and speed required for station two. There's no connection between station two and three, so station two is its own chunk. Station three takes the ball, then drops it onto the exit ramp, which together makes a chunk because they both help get the ball to an exit speed of 3.2 miles an hour. Station one is a platform for products that can, that can be created for more advanced classes. The addition of momentum after the ball hits the wall after the station one will create a harder question for students in more advanced physics classes to solve. Station two can add the use of springs and different cutouts instead of a dip to further their understanding of mechanical energy. Station three can prompt the students with a harder question about the work to lift up the cup and the rotational inertia of inertia of pulley to challenge more advanced students. The aerodynamics and aesthetics of our design are important for how the one projects work. These tables represent the importance of each aerodynamic and aesthetic. As you can tell, we favor uh, functionality over looks because we want our product our function to work. This is a drawing file of the entire BRG product with an assembly file next to it. The ball enters the BRG in station one that is yellow. It comes in a half pipe and hits a pin that hits another ball at the top of the station and sends it down a ramp and around the turn in station two in blue. The ball travels through the bin in the cup of station three, which is red. Then the students answer the question on the computer and the motor pulls up the cup up the cup and dumps it down the exit ramp. The correct ramp must be chosen for station one in order for the station two to work. The students use Newton's three laws to do so. The correct dip must be chosen in order for the ball to exit the station properly. The students calculate which is the right dip using kinetic and potential energy. The cup is important to carry the ball to the top of the exit ramp. The problems on the front of the cup keep the cup facing the right direction. After completion of the BRG kit, testing was run to analyze the team's product. A major positive for the team came in the fact that the BRG, including the fault system, functions properly very consistently. The team, though, does agree that parts of the BRG could use improvement, including the lack of durability of the cardboard, occasional drops in ball speed, and Arduino bugs. Further analysis on stress, speed, and programming learned in future engineering courses could help manage these issues. The team expects to follow a Scenario 1 model with prices independent of demand. The team came to this conclusion as the primary market of fifth grade teachers would likely purchase the kit in bulk through methods of county or state educational department implementation. Along with the fixed cost, the team believes there will be an additional cost of $100 per kit. The team also plans to sell approximately 5,000 kits at a price of $135 per kit. These are the formulas we used for our economic analysis. These assisted in helping us find total cost, total revenue, and total profit per year when all 5,000 kits are sold. From our projection cost, a break-even point of 375 kits sold is found. This is crucial to know that the team will be able to make a profit regardless of how many kits are sold after 375 kits. With this in mind, our cash flow diagram expresses the team's request of a loan of $250,000 with a quarterly interest rate of 3% to be given at the start of year one from VTESIC. A quarterly repayment starts at the beginning of year two and finishes at the end of year three. A one-year grace period for the repayment of the loan is requested as the team looks to first make an initial profit after using much of the loan on development and manufacturing systems for the BRG kit. Also, the team plans on using a quarterly repayment system as a show of good faith to be testing. This way, the company will receive some of their investment back gradually rather than in a lump sum at the end of year three. After finding the future value return to be testing, the team calculates the return of investment to be 42.58%, making this a very lucrative investment to be test. These are the operations for assembling the team's BRG kit. Through actual testing and manual handling and placement, average times were found to complete each task and also listed in the table. After calculation, total time was found to be 246 seconds per kit. 
The team then estimates the labor per assembly to be $12 an hour, or 82 cents per kit. The team finds this assembly cost to be very beneficial as it allows for more money to be spent on better materials and more effective manufacturing processes. Our cost sheet depicts price estimates with materials and manufacturing in mind. After purchasing the material from hardware distributors, the team found the necessary quantities of material along with the prospective cost for the BRT kit. A total manufacturing cost per kit of $58.69 met the team's expectations as the price for the Arduino for each kit was known to be significantly more expensive than other materials. The team then analyzed the manufacturing methods used during physical creation of the BRT and estimated the respective labor costs per minute depending on the skill level required. Taking into account total material cost per kit, total manufacturing cost per kit, and the total assembly cost per kit, the overall cost per kit was then estimated at $100, and which was expected as it was used in calculating projections and investment proposal. Design phase three involved a discussion on matters previously mentioned in earlier design phases, along with new material that finalized the BRT. The team, though, hopes to continue the kit into the future through more analysis methods learned in future engineering courses. Also, the team is still preparing to create kit instructions and finish on time with our December 13, 2017 deadline. Again, we are, Hila, we are Team 16 Hila Engineering Solutions, and we would like to thank you for listening to our design phase three.